Hey guys, it's Brian. I'm coming at you from Smokehouse Bayou International Headquarters here in Ocean Springs. It's early in the morning. It's about 6.20. I need another cup of coffee. But hey, what I want you to know is we're going to shoot a video today about how we make Smokehouse Bayou beef jerky. Our online orders have, have exploded. We've shipped jerky to all 50 states and our YouTube channel's growing. And look, we just like sharing how we do things with you. Um, and when you get that bag of Smokehouse by you, you'll know exactly how it was made. And I think that's special to people, you know. It gives them insight into the, uh, the item that they're enjoying, and in this case, the beef jerky they're enjoying. So anyway, stay tuned. I'm gonna get, grab a cup of coffee. We'll be right back, and we're gonna smoke some jerky today and have a good time. Alright guys, when you're making world class beef jerky, it comes down to a few things. Your marinade, your meat, and your smoking method or dehydration method or whatever. But we're smoking jerky here at Smokehouse by you. And so look, I'm going to go over one of our basic marinades that we use on our smoked jerky. I'll give you the ingredients. Obviously they're on the bag of our jerky as well. I'm not going to get into our exact recipe. Uh, but I can tell you this, you know, cayenne pepper, garlic powder, and uh, brown sugar kind of make the world go round in the south because you've got that balance of sweet and heat. And um, hey, we just like garlic down here, okay? So anyway, those are three staples of our ingredients. Also salt and sugar. And I want to teach you something about jerky making, okay? Um, I was at a USDA facility in Ohio. This was probably about two years ago. And the, uh, the guy that owned the facility, he asked me, he said, what's the water activity in your jerky? And I'll explain what that means, okay? Water activity is, if you think about it, um, when we're dehydrating the meat or we're smoking the meat, <clears throat> to make the meat shelf stable where it is actually considered jerky, okay, uh, you have to reduce the water activity to a specific level. And I won't get into all those numbers or whatever. Uh, I guess I will in this story just a little bit, but you're reducing the water activity, which is part of the process of making it shelf stable and making it actually jerky. So the guy says to me, he says, uh, what is your water activity in your jerky? And I said, 0.68. And he laughed and said, you mean 0.86, which means he thought it had a higher water content. And I said, not according to Mississippi State. And, uh, and he said, man, there's no way that your water activity is that low and your jerky is that tender. And so he had a machine there where they could actually grind the jerky up and do a quick test and test the water activity. And on his machine, it came back 0.69, which is really close to what I had told him. And he was just blown away. He said, this is the most tender jerky I've ever had. Um, and I can't believe the water activity is so much lower in my jerky. In other words, it wasn't just shelf stable, it was table stable. That jerky, you could have set it on the table for 30 days and it would still be good, okay? So the ability to get your water activity very low and still have tender jerky is hinging on a couple of things. And we're going, it might be jerky 101, but we're probably going to get a little jerky 201 or 301 in this. Um, but when you, uh, when you smoke the jerky, if you want tender jerky, we go with a thicker cut meat, okay? You're gonna, you're gonna cut it about a quarter inch or a little thicker uh, to begin with. And then also, you need to use enough salts or salt and sugars, be it brown sugar or just regular uh, white sugar, cane sugar. Um, what happens there is when you use that in your marinades, it or in your seasonings, it competes for the water. It draws the water out of the meat, okay? And so you don't have to make super tough, crispy, you know, some people like that kind of jerky and I'm not knocking it. Um, but you don't have to make that super crispy, thin jerky that's really hard after three pieces of your mouth. Uh, I always say my jaw steps are sore, you know, <laughs> from eating that jerky. Um, to get the low uh, water con or the water activity so it'll be shelf stable. You don't have to do that. 
you can go with a thicker cut of meat, but you're gonna to need to use enough salt and sugars in your marinade for that to happen, okay? We do that here, we use enough. I always tell people, you know, you might have a great marinade or a great seasoning, but don't be scared enough, don't be scared to use enough of it, okay? And so that's very important. Anyway, I'm gonna go over the basics of our one of our marinades here, and you can try this at home. You can check, check the different amounts just to make it uh, to your taste, okay? To your taste. I know in different parts of the country, um, they're just not used to the flavor explosion that we have down here in the, in the South. And it's, a lot of times it's like, wow, this is so flavorful. And that's what we want to do with our jerky. It doesn't take any talent for me to just make such a spicy jerky that you can't eat it, right? But I want, when you try our jerky, I want you to be able to taste all the different ingredients in it. And I think that's one thing that uh, is, is a characteristic of world-class jerky. You enjoy it more. So anyway, I have seven ingredients that we use in the, in the jerky marinade, um, or in this particular jerky marinade. And they're very, very basic. I told you we started out with garlic powder. That's what I have here. And obviously I'm making enough marinade to do, I think it probably marinate about 72 pounds of meat, okay? Because our marinade mixture is four pounds of meat to every one pound of marinade. Now look, don't get caught up on the word marinade. A lot of times people say, well, that's a liquid. You're exactly right. I just have always missed, uh, called it marinade even though it's uh, all, um, you know, it's not liquids that we're using. But what, what you'll find later in the video, you'll see that as we, as the meat is tumbling into the, into the seasoning, it all becomes a liquid anyway. And so I've just always referred to it as marinade. So if you wanna leave a comment correcting me, that's okay, it's no big deal. You know, it's kinda like when you know you're doing something wrong, but you keep doing it anyway, or you're saying something wrong. Look, you gotta put, you gotta use enough salt. And so, we put a good amount of salt in there. All right. This is gonna be, this is actually about seven pounds of brown sugar. I'm just gonna dump that straight in there. A little bit of black pepper. I only put about an ounce of that in there. So you can think about that, an ounce of black pepper and enough to marinate 72 pounds of meat. That's not a whole lot of black pepper. A little bit of cayenne. Like I said, the garlic, the cayenne, and the, uh, and the brown sugar make a good balance. Uh, but look, I think it's the Scoville units or whatever, and peppers is how they measure peppers. The swing on cayenne pepper is like 22,000 to 44,000. Anywhere in there is acceptable or whatever. And uh, so you can imagine, that's quite a swing. So if you, if you make, if you make uh, some marinade or some seasoning and you've got it on the, the lower end, 20, 25,000 uh, Scovilles or 22, 25,000 Scovilles, and then the next batch you get is uh, 44, there's really no way of knowing until you use it. But uh, you can tell that Sometimes that's why there's a variation in the in the uh, spice level, I guess, when you're using cayenne. I'm gonna use some sugar. Now, I've obviously got all these uh, measurements that we use memorized because we've done thousands of smokes with it. And then the last thing I'm gonna use, and I'm sorry if I sneeze or whatever, is our curing salt, okay? And on this amount of marinade to do this much meat, I'm only gonna use about three ounces of this. It doesn't need any more. <clears throat> but hey, if you're a jerky maker out there or you're wanting to learn about jerky, we talked about the water content or the water activity in the, in the meat. That's one part of shelf stability. The second would be the type of bag that you bag your jerky in, okay? The third would be an oxygen absorber that you put in that bag that would reduce the oxygen. Light water oxygen are not your friends when you're trying to make 
uh, shelf stable meat okay and then the fourth thing would be a curing salt or some sort of uh, preservative or whatever okay a lot of jerky say they don't use that they'll separate uh, they'll they will uh, use a celery uh, powder or something instead of that we use this excuse me we use this pink curing salt and uh, it works very well for us and it's something you can find online or you can also find it at Academy Sports. I mean, we, we buy a lot of it from Academy because it's right here local. So those things help your jerky. This is what I tell you, those four things right there uh, will help your jerky from growing a beard. You don't want to look in a bag and see a beard on your jerky, okay? And if you do those four things right, your jerky won't grow a beard. Isn't that important, Miss Shayla? Very much. So. We don't like our jerky to have oh, beards. No on. fuzzy jerky. Yeah, we've no. had clean faced jerky right. for four years. We yes. don't want any beards on our jerky. <laughs> Y'all just remember that. All right, so we've got our marinade mixed up. Now I'm just going to hand mix it, and then we're going to throw it on Tyrone and let him tumble it for a little bit. Then the next step is getting the meat right and getting these two together. So stay tuned. All right, we got the marinade off of Tyrone the tumbler. So it's all mixed up well right now and uh, ready to be put with this meat. But look, when we first started, um, you know, just like you at home, we hand sliced all of our eye round. That's the cut that we use. We hand sliced all of that to make the jerky. Then we moved on to a crank slicer. And I'm gonna put a card up here on this video that has another video that shows that device and uh, it's something we picked up at Academy Sports. It's a game winner, I think is the name of the product. And uh, basically you just drop the meat through there, crank the thing, and it creates some great jerky slices for you, which it would, man, we sliced thousands of pounds through those things. And it worked very well. I think it was $99, best $99 we spent in a long time when we got that. Then we went to a big commercial slicer that, uh, you know, a big $10,000 slicer that we would cut all the raw uh, jerky or I round up to make jerky meat. Then we'd have to tear that thing down, completely clean it to the nth degree so we could use it when it came off the smoker to cut the, the, uh, the cooked side of, or the cooked meat, you know? And that tearing down process and cleaning process, you'll see that slicer in a bit. Um, you know, it was just a big, long drawn out thing. And so finally in searching around we found a meat supplier a usda supplier greater omaha and basically we purchase our meat already sliced it's cross cut uh, it creates a very good product for us we're super happy to have it it's quite a bit more per pound to get that labor already done for you but man it drastically reduces the amount of time we have to uh, slice and then just the major cleanup that comes from that and so when we started getting the meat in already sliced that saved me complete afternoons of time uh, so I'm very very happy that we've made that change and Miss Shayla is going to come and show you kind of how the process works with how the meat comes in and uh, what we do from there so check this out that's not a knife <laughs> hey guys Brian told you about um, how we get the meat in. This is what it looks like when we get it. It comes in these boxes like this. Um, they're 10 pound packs, so we use four of them because we do 40 pounds at a time. I'm just going to cut it open. And this is what you, look, what you get out of there. Just mm -hmm. perfectly pre sliced meat, and we love it. We just like to separate them so that it gets, um, the marinade gets on all sides of the meat. It's not one big clump because that doesn't work well. All right, and once you separate them and we're adding marinade as we go or uh, seasoning as we go, how long will they be tumbling to get, make sure that that marinade we, is good in that meat there? We like to tumble it about uh, 45 minutes to an hour, I prefer an hour, just to make sure it's all coated really well. It's good and liquidy and um, just makes for a better product. Well, and one thing about that tumbler, uh, tell them about the vacuum capacity. Yes, the um, we'll put a lid on this and it'll vacuum, um, so, somewhat vacuum seal it. Um, and it cuts down where we used to do this in 
lugs, I think they're called. And we had to let the meat sit for two days to marinate. And this, we can do two days worth of work in an hour. So that yeah. saved us a lot of time there too. Saves a lot of time, saves a lot of labor. We yes. were having to wash all those yes, lugs. We'd was... have like 30 lugs in the cooler. Yep. And man, just to imagine taking the meat out and then having to wash all that. Yep. So from being able to go from the tumblers directly to the smoker, that saved us a ton of time. Absolutely. All right, so y'all can see that Shayla's just going to separate, uh, like she said, about 40 pounds of meat. And with that, we're gonna use 10 pounds of our seasoning, and that's our ratio. And um, anyway, then we'll put it on the tumbler, let Tyrone do his thing. Again, yep. Yep, and then Tyrone's, we'll uh, be going to the smoker Tyrone after that. very vital to us. We love Tyrone. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Shalala. That's what I want to say. <laughs> You're Shayla welcome. and Shalala. She's Shalala. <laughs> silly, silly. All right, after we get the meat in the tumbler, um, Shayla is going to turn it on and she's going to create a vacuum which opens up the pores of the meat and it gets the marinade into the meat like it would be if it was sitting there for a couple of days. Now after the vacuum is set, we start the tumbling process which ensures that all of the meat is thoroughly seasoned. Hey guys, while we're, uh, we're gonna be loading the smoker here in just a little bit, but we're gonna go ahead and put some wood in the water. Look, we buy a lot of our wood from Academy. I know I've mentioned Academy multiple times in this video. I need to start getting paid from those guys. But look, we buy this B&B. &B. They sell a good variety. And today we're gonna to be smoking uh, with pecan. We're gonna do our smoked pecan. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab. You can see they cut these pieces where they fit real good in, the, in our smoker. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a few pieces. And we like to soak it in water for about 20 or 30 minutes while we're loading the smoker. So. We always run out here and do this before we start loading. Let's go back inside. Okay. Hey, we got the jerky off the tumbler. Now we're going to take and dump it in this bus boy and load the smoker. And this jerky's been tumbling for about 50 minutes. And so, like we explained, it's got the vacuum tumbler. Um, the, uh, the 50 minute tumble is uh, about equivalent to two days being in the, uh, in the marinade. So we're not gonna sit here and make you watch us load the whole thing, but we're gonna load a little bit of this jerky and talk for just a second here. Well, we wanna start on the bottom. Can we go up with it? We're using Southern Pride 500 which is one of the best restaurant uh, smokers. It is a rotisserie whole log smoker. And we're smoking this with pecan wood today. But hey, no salt, no sawdust here, no uh, smoke um, generators uh, into a smokehouse. This thing is a, prop a propane assisted whole log smoker. And uh, it smokes as good as any smoker in the world. So we're really excited to have this. And um, it'll hold about 60 pounds at one time. And it takes us about 30 minutes to get the smoker loaded. So we're gonna keep doing. Miss Shalila's a lot uh, faster than I am. Miss Shayla, she don't, mind, she don't mind telling you. <laughs> you talk a lot. That I talk a lot, well she works a lot. So anyway. Hey, we'll get it done then. That's exactly right. And look, this is the whole idea of this video. We want y'all to see the behind the scenes exactly what's going on. So when you get your bag of smokehouse by you, you can see how it was done. That's right. We don't farm our jerky out for other people to make and put our name on it. You're looking at who makes it. That's it, right you know, here. It's yep. made with love on the bayou by us two right here. Yep. So anyway. Uh, get to work. Come on. All right. She's already <laughs> cracking the whip. <laughs> All right, we've got the smoker loaded. Let's get this puppy fired up. Babe, go put the wood in the wood box for me, please. Will do. 
go ahead and cut the propane on. I'm going to put two logs in at a time. And this is, again, this is pecan wood. Proper humidity is vital in the smoking process. All right, Brian's got the wood in the firebox. Now we're going to set the smoker to 190 and let it do its thing. Hey guys, we're back. The smoker has been going about three hours at 190. Um, I'm going to check it now and see if it's ready to ramp up. Well, it sounds like your timer's going off. Well, it's because it's time to check it. Well, go ahead. <laughs> Oh, Lordy, yes. I'm not gonna let all this heat out of here, guys, but it's ready to ramp. So let's bump it up. We're gonna bump it up to 260. Right. And then once it gets to 260, we'll cut it off and get her chopped up, ready to bag. Why do we want to get to 260? Well, 260 gets us at our um, uh, our lethal, what's it called, Brian? It's a lethal step in the HACCP plan. Yes. Well, actually, we've probably already had the lethal step but this is the additional lethal step that makes sure that yeah. any type of bacteria, blah, 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 anything that is little bitty and you can't see it is going to die, right? right? And then the second reason is the marinade. Yes, it makes it the most yummiest when you right. get it to this temp. We call it the burn point. So yes. you want to go just below the burn point and that's going to make that marinade the most flavorful. And that's what sets apart Smokehouse Bayou from any big name jerky that you find in a store because their smokehouses will only go to about 175 yeah. to 180. So they yeah. cannot hit that step that we do in this smaller smoker. So advantage Smokehouse Bayou for having the Southern Pride. And that's what we're, yeah. uh, that's one reason that our method is different from everybody else's on the on the market. I've never met another smoke yeah. master or pit master that did what we do. Right, and like I said, step. it's the most yummiest. I mean. Well, that's the best way to say it. It's the most <laughs> yummiest. <laughs> so we're gonna ramp this baby up now. Get it up to 260. 260 and then. And we'll check on it here in a few. Yep. Hey guys, we're at 260. The ramp process is over. Now, Shayla's gonna come in with the camera. You're gonna hear the jerky sizzle. That's the difference between Smokehouse Bayou and every other jerky on the market. They can't get their smokehouses up to a, but about 185 degrees, and that's what makes the difference with our marinade. So come check this out. Now you gotta, when you open up that smoker, you can see that smoke right up in your face, but if it all shut up, you can hear that sizzle. Sound like bacon, yo. Smokehouse Bayou jerky is the only thing that makes bacon jealous. Don't know if y'all knew that or not. Alright, so what we're going to do is let this rotisserie out, it'll cool off a little bit, and then we'll get that slicer over here and start slicing it, and then Miss Shayla's going to show you how she bags it. Alright, okay, the, the uh, smoking process is done, the jerky is ready, it's still quite warm, if not a little hot, uh, the best time to slice it is now, so we're going to fire up the old F19S, this thing makes short work of it, and you'll see... Uh, See how we get this uh, jerky sliced into bite-sized pieces so Miss Shayla can uh, bag it. Kind of loud. the smoke pecan right there man that's pretty so look we're gonna finish cutting this up and then uh, Shayla's gonna bag some up show you the finishing process of there and you will have had a really good tour virtual tour of smokehouse by you and how we make the jerky that you guys love so and we love making so anyway let me finish slicing this and then we'll get over there to the bagging section all right, guys, Brian's got the jerky cut up for us. Um, I'm going to show you how I bag a bag. 
um, I'm the last person that touches your jerky before it gets shipped out. And just so you know, when you order a bag, um, I'll write you a personal little note on each, each one. I get a personal note written on there, thanking you for your order. All right, there's our weight. I'm gonna put an oxygen absorber in there. I'm gonna fill the bag. Handy dandy French fry thing there. Ryan's awesome thought there. This works better if you turn it on. We say our turkey's made with love. Every piece is, is quality controlled by yours truly, so to speak, because <laughs> I'm picky. But there's your bag of jerky. Um, that's how it's done. Just that simple. Hey guys, I know this video might have went a little longer than even I hoped for, but I want you to know, we took our time, we tried to be as thorough as we possibly could. We wanted you to get a, get a good indication of how your jerky's made. But then also, if you wanted to learn how to make jerky, then we would have given you some valuable information and uh, hopefully saved you some time and effort as you uh, go on to make jerky or whatever. And if not though, hit us up at Smokehouse by you. And uh, we've got a, a thing where you order any six items, shipping's free. And we also make a bag and send to a deployed active duty military member or a veteran in your honor. So that's our way to give back. We're veteran owned and operated and uh, we love our uh, veteran and active duty military personnel. So anyway, thanks for uh, coming by Smokehouse by you. We hope to hear from you. And if you're ever in Ocean Springs, feel free to get up with us and come by International Headquarters. <laughs>